so welcome back in. We're set for game number three here of CTL Week 1 between Guns and Roaches and the King's Men. Spawning down here in the lower left-hand portion of GSL Atlantis Spaceship, it is our third consecutive Teal Protoss. It's Peck. And spawning across from him in the 12 o'clock position in the orange color playing for the King's Men. His team's down 0-2. Can he bring the series back? It is Bogus Bart. Our first Terran. Yay! Um, <laughs> we'll see if we can bring this series back. This is a gold level game. Uh, and our first one at that. And GSL Atlantis Spaceship is a gigantic map. As we'll see in just a second. There's only one Zamaga Tower in this version. Uh, in the IPL version, there are two towers, but in the GSL version, there's only one here in the middle of the map. Uh, a couple other important features. Uh, you have your, your very close natural, of course. That's pretty standard on most maps these days. Your third base tends to be a little bit farther away, and it's harder to defend because there's this gigantic space back here where you just run units and counterattack all day, and it makes this map really great for Zerg players. This, it's sort of your fourth base. Your, your fourth base here has this fantastic bonus. It's a rich Vespian Geyser. It's a third Vespian Geyser. You harvest it with four workers, and they'll return I believe it's eight gas per trip, and that's a really nice boost to your gas economy, and you'll tend to see a lot of higher tech play if the game ever gets that far. Now, from Terran Tosses on this map, because that third base is so hard to hold on to, you'll see a lot of two base timings. But this is a new map probably to most of our CTL players, so we'll see how... Uh, they really approach this map and this matchup on it. Again, for anybody just joining, my name is Maristomatic. Thank you for watching these casts. Uh, I hope you enjoy them. I appreciate any feedback. You can email it to maristomaticsc at gmail.com. And I will upload all these games to YouTube and put them in a nice playlist for you. So you can show your friends uh, for all time, if you're part of the Chobo Team League, just how successful you were. But back into the game, Guns N' Roaches up 2-0, to zero, and Heck, their third Protoss defender headed out here. It looks like they used a little bit of a Protoss-heavy lineup uh, in week number one. Look up very quickly for double gas, and it looks like he wants to do a little bit of one base pressure, uh, at least. The expansion, not quite thought for either player. Bogus Bard actually going up that double gas geyser as well. His factory's on the way very quickly, and we'll probably see a Banshee opening from him. Uh, I don't think 1-1-1 one, one, one is a very good strategy on this map. Uh, there is kind of a natural siege progression once you get toward your opponent's natural. But, it's still a long map that if the Protoss is able to scout it, he can get up exactly the units he needs to defend in uh, a pretty decent amount of time before you're able to actually make that journey across the map. We see the scout SCB going up on the first casualty. Actually, it's the second casualty of the game. I guess the scout probe was also destroyed. So we're at 1-1. One one. Everything completely even for these players. And there's the tech lab followed up by that starport. It will be a Banshee opening. We'll see if he transitions uh, into a standard game for there. This is kind of uh, a one base idea from Bogus Bar. So I'm going to check out around the map, make sure there's nothing proxied, I assume. We'll also take control of the watchtower. Uh, the watchtower is not in the most useful location on this map. If we look right now at Peck's vision, you can see just kind of the entrance of this attack path, but not the whole thing. You can actually skirt units around this attack path and uh, really catch your opponent by surprise if he has the Zelda Mega Tower. But now, second gateway on the way, and it looks like Peck uh, is going to sit here. Uh, this Observer will probably be for scouting, and that'll really be his determination uh, if he wants to move out or not. But you see the Banshee on the way. He doesn't quite have enough resources for Cloak, although I imagine that's thought of uh, pretty soon here. Now we should have the resources for Cloak is not going to be started. He's going for a siege tank. So this is going to be a 1-1-1, one, 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 and the point of this Banshee will be not necessarily economic damage. If it gets economic damage, that's fantastic and great and all those sorts of adjectives. Uh, but ideally, you can really harass your opponent into not getting the correct units to defend your follow-up push. Ideally, the Protoss wants just enough stalkers to deal with the Banshees, and then he really wants to focus on Immortals and Zealots. See, that's exactly what Peck is going to do. And these three stalkers, this is a really nice looking defense for Peck. 
Grin, the 1-1-1 one, one, one is still a very powerful pit, uh, push, especially if you bring those SCVs with you. And it can still kill you, even if you've prepared for it. But we'll see what this Banshee can do. It looks like this will be defended pretty nicely from Peck. Even the Observer here, a little bit of an added precaution. But we'll see what Focus Bart can do. He will take a couple of shots uh, very quickly onto that Banshee. And a little bit of Dancing Micro here. Let's check the APM from both of our players. We haven't done that uh, yet in these series. 52 to 51, so both players looking very even. And ramping up that APM in my Micro situations. But Bogus Bart getting out a couple siege tanks. He's going up to three barracks, and this is definitely all in. Uh, there's uh, Siege mode has just now started. It'll make the timing a little bit later, but we'll see if that makes it more powerful uh, with these three barracks. This is, in case you're wondering, this is the amount of production facilities you can produce on, or you can produce on from one base. Uh, you can't do a whole lot more than that. But now he catches a unit back up here. That's a, a little bit of a win. It looks like that was the Zealot that was originally at the tower. Peck trying to get up his units that he'll need to defend. He's got two Immortals so far. Uh, that Sentry is not going to be the most useful unit to him. If he can get up a couple more Zealots, uh, those tend to be very good at defending this. Banshee's leading the way from Bogus Barth. They're going to be used more for scouting, and they will provide a lot of extra damage into this composition, uh, especially if there's not quite enough Stalkers. But this is a really strong push from Bart. He can't lose any of these units needlessly, though. I like the addition of a couple of SCVs, not too, too many. Uh, let's see how many he has brought. There's eight, it looks like. Uh, which is a pretty good number. He'll be able to heal on these siege tanks. He needs to be careful with them. He can't just lead in with them and lose them needlessly. Uh, again, every unit for both players is very valuable at this point uh, in this situation. Peck trying to get high ground vision, but Bogus Bart does have those banshees to provide himself high ground vision. And Observer is really well positioned for both er, for Peck, uh, as you can see kind of where his opponent's at, and try and catch him on Siege. But this is a really nice looking Siege up from Bogus Bart. Uh, and Peck will have to decide when he wants to move in on this. Uh, otherwise, he will just lose too much. Can't afford to lose that stalker there. He's going up on the high ground, trying to catch his opponent off guard. Trying to target down. He does have enough DPS. Uh, one more shot will take out that first siege tank. That's a nice win, but there are... Look at the the Terran units streaming across the map uh, to try and meet up. Peck is reinforcing as quickly as he can. He's really staying on top of that. Supply lead in favor of the Terran right now. Nice Guardian shield, and I do like the addition of that. This is not where the Protoss wants to engage. He's taking a lot of siege tank fire there. But all the Immortals survive. He lost his Zealots in a sentry. Now moving back into a more defensive position is Bogus Bart. Up on the high ground, nice shelling down. That's another nice pick off there uh, by Peck. There's still two siege tanks remaining. There's also these two Banshees that have been so annoying, providing high ground vision. Now he's trying to catch his opponent on siege. He will take uh, a little bit of a shot at these Marines. Now a little bit of an overcommitment there from Bogus Bart. Peck will move down, and this will decide the game. He's trying to pick off the siege tanks. Those are the real damage dealers in this composition. He will get all the siege tank, but there's nothing left to defend against the Marines and the Banshees, and it looks like Bogus Bart will just move up into the main and take one back for the King's Men. Probes being pulled by Peck. It's not going to be enough as they're all taken down. And that'll be GG. Peck did a good job defending. He just lost a little bit too much uh, in some of these little engagements. He did a nice job trying to target down uh, the siege tanks that provide the real power to that composition. But I feel like he just didn't quite get up the right mix of units. Stalkers aren't the most useful uh, to do that, except to shoot down Banshees. And I'm not saying it was poorly played by any means. It was really well played by Peck, but just not enough to defend the push from Bogus Bart. So our Terran player takes game number three, and he'll bring the series back to 2-1 to one with Guns and Roaches in the league. We'll step aside for another little quick break, and when we come back, we'll have our first Platinum-level game of CTL, and we'll see who uh, can really... Or will Guns N' Roaches pull ahead and take that 3-1 to one lead, or will TKM tie it up? We'll find out in 